In this video, I'm going to give you a complete walkthrough of Zoom and its features, show you how to use it to meet people one on one, and also show you how you can bring in up to 100 people to meet as a group, all from the comfort of your home. YouTube Simplified. Now more than ever, we need to be able to interact with people in an effective way. One of the ways that a lot of people are doing that now is through Zoom. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Zoom to conduct meetings, meet with followers, and do all the things you need to do to continue to run your business. Let's jump over onto the computer and I'll show you how everything works. All right, so when you first come into Zoom, you're going to see on the first screen here, you have sign up for free, but this does uh, slowly move around. You also have this big blue button in the upper right hand corner that says sign up, it's free. We're gonna go ahead and do that. We are going to set up a account. In this case, I'll use this. They send you an email to verify. You're gonna click on the activate account. It'll bring you into the screen here. You have to enter your name and come up with a password. Firm your password. You have the option to invite colleagues. We're gonna skip that for now. Not interested in doing that. So uh, now we have an account set up. It, see, it, it shows you that you have your custom meeting URL, which you can share with people. You can start a meeting now. Now what happens is, Anytime you get a link from somebody or you send out a link, there's nothing anybody has to do ahead of time. The great thing about Zoom is if you do click on a link on your desktop and you don't currently have the software installed, the link is going to prompt that user to get the software installed uh, the first time that uh, they interact with a Zoom link, which is super convenient rather than having to reach out to somebody and explain to them to download this software so you can have a call with them the very first time they click on a link, it kind of starts that whole process for them. When you host a meeting with somebody else, they don't have to have a Zoom account to attend your meeting. So it's really helpful in the case that they don't have to go through that enter your email and verify your email and all of that to attend something that you've hosted. So that's super powerful and easy. If you want to be the person in your business, if you have multiple people working with you, you can be the one person to get the Zoom account set up and then you can send the links out and everybody just has to click on the link and join the meeting. Now, the one thing you do want to be careful of is you don't want to share your Zoom link in a public space if it's a space where you have no control over who can attend your meeting. You want don't want some random person to jump into your meeting and start sharing their screen with who knows what for everybody that's attending your meeting. So I'm going to show you one of the other things you can do to help protect that. But in general, when you're scheduling a meeting, send that link via some secure process so that it only only gets to the people that you intend to have uh, at that meeting. So in, just to show you what this looks like, if we click on that meeting link, you get this in the desktop or the, uh, the browser that shows up. And then you'll see this box that pops up. This is actually the software that, that gets installed locally. And then it'll prompt you right away, do you want to join the meeting with your computer audio? Which we can say yes to that. And then we're in the meeting. Now, if we then want to click on start video, we can try this, but this is probably not going to work right uh, because Zoom is uh, probably going to try to use the camera that I'm actually filming on right now. So that'll probably be a conflict, but typically you won't be recording a video while doing a zoom call, but, uh, we'll see exactly what this does. If we try to turn on the video. Yeah. See, it says failed to start camera because the camera is actually being used. That is one of the things you need to be aware of. If you have any other software installed in your machine, and this is the case across multiple, uh, softwares as well, that a lot of times multiple, um, software apps cannot interact with a single video capture device at the same time. So if you do run into this issue, close out zoom, make sure you don't have any other programs that are open that are using or communicating with your camera and then reopen zoom after they're closed. And you should be able to make that connection. Now, the one thing I'll show you is when you click on the drop down next to the video, you'll see that it lists the possible options. I've actually disconnected this webcam, which is why uh, it didn't show up here. And we might even be able to, if I change it to the webcam, let's see if we could actually get that to work. If I hold this camera up, uh, no, it doesn't want to. This prop, this camera probably is also being um, 
locked up by OBS, which is what I'm using to create this video. But that's just something to keep in mind. It is a common problem that occurs and it's something that people who are trying to attend your meetings might run into. So it's really important to know that that's a thing. And if it happens, the easiest thing to do is to close out Zoom, check on your machine to make sure you don't have anything else interacting with the camera that you're trying to use or multiple cameras. Like when I use Open Broadcast Studio, it occupies all the cameras that are connected, which is why neither one of these cameras will work. That is a common problem. The other problem people will tend to pop on and their audio is not working. Again, right next to that little audio button, you're going to get a list of all the available audio inputs. Most webcams have an audio input. If you have a mic, obviously it's another, uh, uh, input and if you have headphones that have a mic on them that too is another uh, input so the things to consider when you're actually on a call if you get on a call and you think you're talking into the mic and people can hear you but it's really distant it's possible that maybe this is set to the headphones the logitech headphones down here instead of the mic that i'm actually talking into and the symptom of that will be a really distant sounding audio if somebody runs into that then that could be the case if they you're not getting any audio they may have some device that is in your list but not actually working properly so it's always best that uh, when they run into that problem you can click here and allow them to figure out exactly which microphone they're using now obviously when they're running into that issue they can't communicate with you so what you can do is tell them that in addition to these features down at the bottom of this box there's also a chat so if they can't talk to you, you can tell them, hey, just type in the chat, you know, what the problem is and let me know when you've tried this and then walk them through kind of a quick, a quick fix. Hey, check, you know, click on your audio, do that. And you can kind of allow them to use chat to interact from their side. In most cases, in all the clients that I've worked with uh, that I do consulting over Zoom, I can usually just say, yeah, click on the little drop, the little arrow next to the mic, pick the mic that you're actually talking into and we're usually good to go. All right. So if you want to record Record your conversation or your meeting with your group or one-on-one. -on -one. You can click the record button down here. You'll see the little indicator up here for any reason you need to pause the recording. Maybe there's something that you don't want to keep a record of. You can certainly pause the recording. It'll show you as a... Uh, uh, indicate that to you as well and then you can resume recording when you uh, head back now there's a number of different features on here now so once you've created this meeting um, you have your link right here and you have this button to invite this is how you can share with people now you can either type in uh, email addresses or pull email addresses in from people or you can just simply come in here and click on copy url you'll see that it just pastes, it just copies that URL for you. So uh, you can just copy that, throw it in an email, send it through your work email or your business or, or you know, however you need to communicate with people, let everybody to know, uh, know to come there. If you schedule it or you plan on doing it at a specific time, give them all the time details. Just say, hey, we're going to meet on Tuesday at five o'clock. Here's the link. Uh, you know, remind them to start the process 15 minutes early so they can download the software if they need to and make sure that everything is up and running by the time the meeting starts. Just good practices to have. So we'll get rid of that. We'll max out this and I can show you. So there's a bunch of other features. You have sharing capability here as well. It allows you to share the different screens uh, from your uh from your device you can actually pick them you can see here in gimp uh my last thumbnail there's the thumbnail screens that i was working on uh the zoom pricing there you can share these into the meeting now there's also some advanced features which are cool um if we have the cameras working and we'll, we'll we'll circle back to this and i'll do a screen capture from a different device so i can show you how all the camera functions work but you can also just do a portion of a screen in the advanced feature sound only Plus, you can also do files. If you want to share a file with somebody directly from Google Drive or Box or OneDrive or Dropbox, you can actually get that all set up in here, link those accounts to your Zoom account, and be able to share files with the group that way. So a bunch of cool features. They also have the cool whiteboard feature, which is pretty nice. Uh, this is what everybody's going to see. So if you want to share important information here, uh, or erase it. You can put on text and, and all that other stuff. It gives you a lot of cool features. If you need to make some kind of flow chart and explain to people exactly what your process is going to be, you can come in here and kind of get that all built out. 
Uh, a lot of flexibility here in terms of what you can do to communicate with another person or a group to really get the work done. In times like these where we have to be creative and find new ways to do things, uh, it's nice to have these functionalities in these features in a free service, in a free application. And there's a ton of features that you can use for free. It just makes it so much easier. And it's the kind of thing, once you start doing, you'll kind of uh, scratch your head as to how you have not been doing this to stay more connected, communicate better with your crew, and just get more done no matter where you're at. All right, so here is Zoom with my video turned on and we'll see exactly how some of these features work. Now, one of the features that Zoom does have that I've actually never used, but we'll try it. All right, so in the video section, they have the option to choose a virtual background. Now, I have a background that I've uh, taken some time to set up, but if you're in a situation where you need to get on a meeting and uh, you may not have the best background, we can go in and we can choose a virtual background, and we'll see just how good of a job this does. Um, and depending on what it is that you're, how you're set up, you can see that one kind of conflicts because it's almost the same shade as my hat. But uh, if I stay completely still, it's kind of cool. But we're going to throw this on. And uh, um, as you can see, it's, I don't know that I would call it perfect, um, especially when you have a hat on, but uh, it does give you the ability to um, hide your background. Now, personally, depending on who you're meeting with, I would probably try to go with the standard background because if you know, as you can see, it it it's not the best the best removal, but uh, there are certainly cases where this would be better than whatever the background might be. But um, for me, I prefer to use my own actual background. We'll do choose a virtual one. We'll click none, and we'll go back to our our actual background. But uh, if you don't have the luxury of having a nice clean backdrop for whatever you're doing, or maybe you're on the beach and you need to meet with a boss, I don't know <laughs> whatever your situation is. If you happen to have your laptop with you, you may want to throw a different background behind you that looks like an office or something. I don't know. That's between you and your boss. But uh, in any event, it does provide a lot of cool features. And we want to look at some of these sharing features that I mentioned to you. Again, sharing the screens. Now we can do this now with the other camera and I'll show you. You can actually uh, show content from a second camera. So if I hold this up here and I collect or connect uh, content from second camera, it'll switch to this camera right here and it'll also show my original camera, which you see up, up there. It's really hard to do backwards, um, but this can come in handy, especially if you're in a situation where you're working on a surface and you want to share something. Maybe it's a document or something that you want to be able to share with somebody, uh, or even if you had something on your, your phone or whatever, and you wanted to be able to share that content with them, this could possibly be a cool setup to allow you to do just that. So you can certainly see the potential there to use multiple cameras and really set up something uh, quite interesting, especially you know if you're doing all kinds of things. If you're doing development or um, you know anything that is in hard copy, you could certainly share that with them on a live stream that way. There's really a ton of flexibility in using Zoom in whatever type of business that you're in. If you're a teacher and you want to meet with your students, if you are uh, an educator, college professor, any of those things, and you want to meet with a group of people, if you are um, managing, you know, an office of people in the situation that we're in now where everybody is uh, working from home, you have the option to do morning meetings like this and just touch base and make sure that everybody is ready to go, has everything that they need. And you can use some of these sharing features to uh, give them additional information. Now, once you have people in your meeting, you do have the option to manage participants. I'm in this meeting all by my lonesome, but uh, you can come in here and you can uh, change the name of anybody and you can actually come in here and mute everybody. So if you get like 100 people in a group and everybody's trying to talk at once, it can be a complete nightmare. And a lot of times when you're hosting uh meetings that big, it's one person who is going to present to all of them whether rather than having to trying to have a hundred person conversation. So what we do in this case is you just come in here and you mute all and then you can just keep the presenter unmuted. So this allows you to come in here and actually do some stuff uh, 
globally across all of the people that are in the group. So that can come in pretty handy as well. There's also an option in here where you can mute participants on entry. So if you have that person that comes in and they're setting up their camera and just sitting down, but they've already clicked to start the meeting, you can make it automatic that you mute them. So their last minute, you know, yelling at the dog to be quiet or whatever it is, doesn't come in through the meeting as they're getting set up and squared away. So that can be super helpful for you too. And we all know Although the person who was on the conference call at work or wherever the case may be that is never on mute. And in the traditional environment, you don't have the ability uh, through a normal conference call to mute everybody from your end. Zoom allows you to control that, control everybody else's input via this console when you're hosting the meeting. So it's super powerful. And in a lot of cases, this can absolutely replace whatever system you're using right now uh, for conference calls and those sorts of things. So uh, it is something that regardless of the times that we're in today uh, can be a powerful tool and you don't have to use video. You can just use audio and still get these features to interact with people uh, through a web-based client uh, without having to be at the mercy of who, who has their mute button on or off on the other end of the call. And we touched on this a little bit earlier, but we do have chat. You can uh, share files in the chat as well. You have the ability to control exactly who can chat and how they can chat. You can allow attendees to chat with no one, the host only, everybody publicly, and everybody publicly and privately, meaning you can either do a group message to everybody or individuals can interact with each other via chat without broadcasting that to the group. So a lot of functionality here. Quite frankly, for a free service, I think this it has a wealth of features available in it. The only limitation that you're really seen is 100 people and 40 minutes in length. So you can absolutely rock that all day long with 30 minute meetings, get a ton of work done. And quite frankly, if you're holding a meeting that's longer than 30 minutes, there might be some of that that you can plan ahead of time before you get everybody on a call. Anyway, uh, you uh, have probably heard the joke or a lot of people talk about uh, the meetings that really could have been an email. Uh, from an efficiency standpoint, especially uh, trying to evolve to more efficient practices in your work environment, getting all that squared away before you actually have the face to FaceTime can be powerful as well. So just a tip when you're planning your meetings, if it's beyond 30 minutes to begin with, try to figure out ways to make that a little bit more efficient and productive for everybody who's on your call. You can also do this on your mobile device. And so I'll show you real quick what the Zoom app looks like here. So you open the Zoom app and start a meeting. And uh, yeah, you uh, give it permission to use uh, internet audio and then you're in the meeting. You can turn on your video or choose to just do audio only. There's a bunch of different features similar to what you'd see on the desktop version. Turn your camera on and off. You can go in and adjust your mic. Also see a list of who's in the meeting as well as some other features that are available to you, including changing your background using a virtual background. I talked about this earlier. If you're someplace that's uh, not prime for a business meeting, you can change your background uh, to something a little more appropriate. Also some additional settings in here uh, that you can do, including chat. Uh, you have these little icons that pop up on the screen, thumbs up, clap, that sort of thing. But the uh, chat is also available. You can type anything in there and interact with other people in your meeting. Excellent app to extend this meeting functionality to your mobile device. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions at all, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I'll also put a link to the Zoom website in the description below so you can go there and get started. As I mentioned, it's absolutely free. I think it's the way of the future and a lot of people's eyes have been open to its power now given the situation that we're all in. So you should definitely get on board because if you're not using it yet, there's a good chance that somebody's going to bring it to your attention in the future. And in the business world, it might uh, serve you well if you're already already on top of the game and you know how to use Zoom and how to make it efficient and effective for your business to grow and be able to communicate the best way possible. And hey, don't forget this video has been sponsored by TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy is your number one browser plugin for managing and growing your YouTube channel. It's available to download for free. There's a link in the description below or you can go to trytubebuddy.today and get started for free. I hope you found this video helpful and it helps you to understand the different ways you can use online video to help grow your business and be more productive. Creator Fundamentals is all about helping you simplify YouTube, which is a great way to use video to build your brand and your business. So click on this playlist right up here and I can show you even more videos that can help you simplify YouTube. I'll see you in the next video.